Well, I want to welcome you back for the third and of three installments of uh, getting to know kind of an introductory uh, who Glenn W. Worthington is. I'm the guy who literally wrote the book on diamonds in Arkansas and I'm, I just presented these three videos kind of introducing myself to you so you'd understand why I'm qualified to be your host to teach you about the Crater at Diamond State Park. Um, I, I got a headache right now. I hope I can get through this, but I don't know what's going on. But anyway, um, we'll talk about me for just a minute. There's one other thing that happened that I want to tell you about. And uh, I was on Wheel of Fortune one time and I had a chance to plug uh, Crater or Diamond State Park and diamond mining and Pat acted like he'd never heard of it before. So there's still people out there who've never heard of the Crater of Diamonds. And uh, then I'd like to talk about James Archer. I'm wearing his shirt today. He found more diamonds at the state park than anyone ever has before and uh, or ever will in my opinion so he, he found almost 5,000 diamonds and I hope to show you a video in a minute a short clip of his largest diamond registered under his name a five and a quarter carat yellow we owned it for a while and then resold it but while we had it I took a video this was wow 21 years ago I think well in 1999 yeah so goes back away so the guy you'll see in the video looks a lot younger than this guy standing here before you but anyhow um we'll, we'll watch a short introductory at uh, wheel of fortune and then we'll talk about james archer bear with me while i get this set up just a minute Good enough, I guess. Okay, we'll stop it there and, and go on to other things. That's enough Wheel of Fortune for one day. I just thought, you know, while a, a game, a TV game was giving away free money, I'd, uh, I'd go and pick up some, and I just assumed that since I was a guy who wrote a book and some magazine articles that I knew how to spell and I could probably do well uh, at Wheel of Fortune, but it, it didn't turn out to be as lucrative as I had hoped. But anyway... Uh, had fun and I got to plug the crater of Diamond State Park so let's talk about James Archer instead of me for now uh, this is uh, James Archer scrubbing like he did so many days out there um, sitting there he had a, a half barrel and had his screens in it and he was sitting down just rubbing those screens he had rubber gloves on that go up almost to the elbow and wearing mm, red slicker I mean yellow slicker suit like a, a rain suit and then it must have been a cold day because he had a jacket on of course he's got his hat on backwards and got his glasses on james was always a real pleasant man uh he would come into the crater of diamonds every morning and tell everybody i'm just so proud to be here and if you're not familiar with that southern expression like i wasn't we moved here from kansas city 24 years ago and i hadn't heard that one before and that's the way of expressing i'm happy to be here but uh, that, that was James' phrase every day. I'm just so proud to be here. He just loved to come to the diamond mine. And one time, the National Geographic came out to do a film and interviewed him. And they said, Mr. Archer, do you come here every day and look for diamonds? He says, well, no, I, uh, I come here six days a week because uh, I take off on a Sunday. That's the Lord's Day, and I need to go to his house on Sundays. So, but anyway, he was a real good man, pleasant man, hard worker. Oh, he, he worked hard and uh, earned every diamond that he found and uh, had quite a career there. And 
I've got some stories I want to tell you about James Archer. I wrote him in the book so I didn't misrepresent any of the facts. So instead of me just talking off the top of my head, I'd like to read you a portion of my book, Genuine Diamond is Found in Arkansas, that is about James Archer. Uh, with his persistence, persistent visits over a 30-year period, one particular miner named James Archer became an icon at the state park. He first came to the site more than 60 years ago in a wagon pulled by mules. But on that trip, he did not find a diamond. Years later, his wife visited the park and found a diamond. So James became determined that he was going to find one too. For the next two years, two years, he surface searched in his spare time. But the only thing he got for all his effort was some gentle teasing from Mrs. Archer. Then he started digging and washing for diamonds, and James' luck changed. In 1975, he found three diamonds that weighed over one carat each. In the 1970s, Mr. Archer worked at a sawmill unloading railroad ties by hand all day, and then when he got off work, he would go over to the Crater of Diamonds, and uh, he would also work there all day on Sundays. I remember meeting Mr. Archer at the pig pen when I was there in the summer of 1978. At one point, he did not show up to dig for a couple of days. When he did not return, no, when he did finally return, his arm was in a sling. He had it pinned up here like this. I, I don't mean just in a sling like this. It was clear up here like this. So, I remember seeing him. So. He told us that he had accidentally almost cut his hand off by getting it caught in some machinery at the sawmill where he worked. He should have been home recuperating, but hardworking Mr. Archer was not the type to ever sit still. He could not help but go out to the crater and search for diamonds. I remember him watching him that summer of 1978. He'd dig a hole with one hand, carry buckets of gravel, then work through the entire washing prep process with the use of that one good hand while the other one was strapped up. Uh, that type of stubborn determination paid off well for Mr. Archer. While I was working near him, he found two carat plus diamonds in July of 1978. One was a 1.79 carat brown and the other was a 1.28 carat yellow. Over the years, James Archer found so many diamonds that no one is certain of the total number. I have heard and read figures printed in articles up to eight and 9,000, but I believe that 5,000 diamonds is a fairly accurate approximation. In 1980, he found a 3.21 carat silver white diamond and a clear white weighing 3.27 carats. In 1983, he found a 4.25 carat brown diamond. In 1994, Mr. Archer unearthed a lovely canary diamond weighing 5.25 carats. And in a minute, if I can get this old VCR working, we'll see a video of that because Cindy and I bought that diamond and we owned it for a while. And while we owned it, we took a video of it and that's what you'll see here. And the guy in the video, uh, looks a lot younger than the guy standing here because that video was recorded 21 years ago and I hope this old tape will actually work. But uh, anyhow, um, to go on with what I was reading, so he, he found the five and a quarter carat and officially that is his largest find. The largest find James Archer ever recorded. Uh, here's a couple more pictures. This one on the left, he's washing there at a tub, just sitting on the ground. He didn't go to the wash pavilions. Most of the time he was there, they didn't even have wash pavilions. Pavilions. He worked at the pig pen sub, sometimes standing up and washing, but in his later years, he liked to sit down and scrub. And uh, uh, just one last paragraph here. There's other information in the book about James Archer, and you can get in and read it. But uh, on Wednesday, January 8th, 2003, Mr. Archer went into the crater as he had for 30 years. And at the age of 77, he died there doing what he enjoyed, digging for diamonds. In my opinion, the crater will probably never see a more diligent, consistent, determined, and successful diamond prospector 
than my friend James Archer. So let's uh, see if we can't get this old video going and see what his largest diamond looked like, a five and a quarter carat yellow. And in that video, we kind of roll it around and things. And uh, uh, I've got, a, got this all rigged up and let's, let's hope we can make this stuff work. Yeah, VCRs, you know, old technology, I had to find an old uh, videotape player. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get things going. Um, see if I can even remember how to work a VCR. All right. So this is a 10 point white diamond by a dime just for size comparison. This is James Archer's five and a quarter carat yellow. Look at that beauty. It has not been cut or polished. At that time, it was the 17th largest. Now it's been knocked down by a few larger diamond finds in the last 21 years. Isn't that a beauty? Look at that thing rolling around. It was a knockout. Pardon the old tape, but this is all we can do. There's no way to get a picture of it anymore. It's just old technology. DVDs don't do that. That's my lovely wife Cindy's fingers rolling that diamond around. All right, that's probably good enough. So we'll stop it for there. And I just wanted you to see what that five and a quarter carat yellow that James Archer found looked like. So uh, thanks for joining me and uh, come back and we'll, we'll see what else we can dig up in du diamonds in Arkansas history. So please like and subscribe to our Di Genuine Diamonds in AR YouTube channel. Thank you.